Fair thing. enough. Lore corner. Is that? I'm, I'm is trying it? to go through. This is. Is that this what is you like want? Really long. Lore corner. This is a really <laughs> long season. In case you, you haven't grabbed. You got the grasped, touch. Bro. You got lore corner. Oh my god! Don't bring <laughs> Stan Bush into this. <laughs> I. Uh, Mm. I mean, okay, I guess I guess we'll read from these. I was kind of debating about what I wanted to actually get into, knowing that we have a few weeks before the anniversary event and likely a bunch of new lore dumped on us. Um, we've, we've exhausted a lot of what this season says, so I'm going to go back to some past things that we've missed over the, uh, over the year for uh, December, January, and February, most likely, in addition to the Sabathun uh, one-shot that I really want to do. But uh, we're going to do the seasonal armor before we go on to that. Uh, assuming I pull, yeah, I pull up the two right ones. Uh, this is a story that's set in the, it's set in the Dreaming City. Uh, just to give a bit of background. Uh, I'm kind of trying to figure out where I want, where this pinpoints exactly in the timeline. I think it occurs near the end of Splicer uh, from reading it, but I'm not entirely certain on it. It could happen uh, anytime from the time that Mara sees us in the queen's court and then pieces out until the end of splicer so uh this is from the uh the, the pathfinder's helmet for this season uh eyes open and keep to the horizon petra stood at the bordering cliff's edge of the Devalian mist wrapped in a concealing vapor beside her Ilian, tekken cub and mother a deluge of water spilled from deep within the stone below gentle tremors rippled through their bodies without notice the pure sky above them tore like well-worn fabric as fronds of malignant taken growth crept into the dreaming city. They will be upon us soon. It was not enough to simply halt Oryx's advance, Petra said. She had spent months of conversation building the kindling, an idea in Illin's thoughts prior to the Battle of Saturn. A new coven, a new class of sister recruits. Now with the Queen's flagship in ruins and the coven missing several of its most skilled Techians, there's no longer the luxury of refusal. I cannot hold the reef with crosshairs alone. I cannot search for the queen with looking glasses and a depleted armada. We need more techians, Illyn. You know I'm right. Illyn shook her head. We are not weapons for the queen's wrath to command. The coven's reluctance to forge the next link in the chain of their lineage was a strong one. Since the formation of Luciana and the com ugh, the exploitation of Ribbon, God, the elder techians had grown protective of their arts techniques and texts were kept close despite all that petra knew illin had always been listening to her words she too had dreamt of the harbinger's failure of oryx taking her sisters we will snap shut the ley lines and seal the city illin concluded no petra retorted the queen is lost and might still return she turned to the coven mother of your seven how many are still alive petra felt a mournful flame stoking beneath illin's visor precisely illin said we haven't the strength then heed my requests Petra waved away the mist between them. Train more sisters. Ilan finally broke her gaze at the sky and scowled at Petra. We haven't the time. Training spans decades. Make it work, Petra demanded before taking a breath and continuing. Ilan, I will do whatever you need. Please, can we work through this together? Ilan's head sunk. She leaned over the cliffside, over the stream of plummeting mist, and watched the flow of water drop into endlessness. Send me your candidates. I hope they are stronger than you were. Ooh. So this is I, I was incorrect. This takes place after the, the events of the Taken King, but before Forsaken. Um, but this is a story that spans several years. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably the most revealing piece of information is so we already knew that several Techians were taken during the Battle of Saturn. Um, that was when Shura or uh, Shurochi and um, Sadia were taken, um, and then Oryx placed them there in the uh, in the dreaming city um with a ribbon <clears throat> i think the most interesting piece of information that we get is that petra at one point it's implied trained to become a techian maybe and i i i'm gonna have to refresh myself on petra's lore but maybe that's part of the reason why she has to wear the eye patch now maybe something went horribly wrong in her training right um i think that'd be really cool but she's yeah you know, she's the queen or queen's wrath she is literally mara's right hand person mm -hmm. she is i mean she is the queen's personal bodyguard essentially 
And I think few characters are as loyal in this universe as Petra is to Mara. But I definitely do not think that that is reciprocated. Uh, I think if it was between Mara saving Petra and saving her own skin, she saves herself 10 out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Petra is I, like, I like, this, like... Petra's a... She's just like, man, every time, every scene she's in, she kind of commands it if Mara's not she, in it, right? She, she dominates it. Yeah. She, she dominates the scenery. And I love, you know, we, we got her introduced in House of Wolves. She's introduced in one of the earliest expansions. Mm -hmm. She plays a role in The Taken King, obviously, as a quest giver primarily. And yeah. the dialogue she gives during that is great. Yeah. During all, all her on screen dialogue. But Forsaken really puts her front and center. She's with us. Eris Morn style for the duration of the campaign. Right. And then, you know, becomes the permanent vendor on the Tangled Shore afterwards. I think it's so great to see and see the evolution of that character. We really haven't spent a lot of time with her since Forsaken. I'm glad she's back front and center in this season. Uh, I don't know that this season quite works without her, even though she, she kind of has a bit role. It's similar to how Saladin had one in... Uh, Caesar the Chosen, or really how Crow had one in Chosen. He was just kind of like hiding out in the tower, chatting with us occasionally, and he has his one or two big moments saving Zavala. I feel like we've kind of hit that with Petra. Like, Petra has dialogue with us in some of the Blind Well missions. She had some in the uh, uh, Festival of the Lost. I'm sure she'll have some stuff in the Dawning. But she's had one or two really key interactions with Crow and Mara mm -hmm. that have just set the scene for what is surely coming in the Witch Queen. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, so we're going to read the second one. Uh, the Grips. Place your fingers on the pulse of this place. Find rhythm and synchronize. Okay, I'm going to try and pronounce this name without butchering it, but Bife probably has the definitive pronunciation on this. I believe in you, Josh. Yalea. That's what we're going to call her. Oh, that's... Place her hand. Yalea. That sounds right. Or Leia, I don't know. Laia. Yelaya placed her hands on the focusing crystal once more. It had been months since she had seen the stars. Her view every day was instead of the same stone chamber she shared with 12 others. It doubles as both training ground and lodging for a new group of Techians. The mustiness made Yelaria crave... Yelaya. God! There's no R in it. Yelaya crave the open air of the Dreaming City skyward turrets. She imagined them piercing the sky like masts and jaw drawing the clouds into sails. In her mind, the whole city sailed through the ascendant ocean, navigating the ley lines like currents. Yelaya placed herself there, a voyage, a turret crow's nest in search of a distant land, ascendant anchors restraining cloud sail billows against the wind of her will. She tried to introduce that place to this one, to let them meet and exchange atmosphere. Make this real, she thought but it was nothing more than thought. The concepts were familiar, but the execution was still foreign. Yelaya adjusted the crystal in her hands as if the orientation mattered. Of all her sisters, only she still couldn't shape the ley lines. They're going to shift soon, you know, Austin chided. I know, Yelaya spat back without looking. An explosion shook the room, raining plumes of dust over them and breaking her concentration. Damn it, Yelaya slammed a fist into the smooth stone and cast the crystal orb across the floor. Why are we training in a war zone? Austin watched the crystal skip to the edge of the chamber. This place is built upon a crossroads of ley lines. If you can't align with them here, don't say it. Yelaya hissed as she stood to retrieve the crystal. I need to try again. As she walked, the wall before her illuminated and split into a doorway. Petra Venge entered the chamber, haggard, soot, dulling the sheen of her armor. Yelaya stopped in her tracks. She hid away her embarrassment despite knowing Petra hadn't seen her cast away the cr focusing crystal. Petra's foot tapped the crystal. She bent and scooped this from the ground and looked to Yelaya's empty hands. Do not lose this. There aren't many left. My apologies. I need to try again. Petra scanned the faces of each of the 13 would-be Techians before her. The creases beneath their eyes drew deeper from stress and lack of sleep. I had trouble just the same. Let me show you. So I think that's, I, I, again, this adds another layer. Like, even though Petra's just at the end, this adds another layer to her story. Can she still help shift the ley lines despite not being a true Techian? Hmm. Because we know we've rescued so many Techians now in the Ascendant Plane. Yeah. And we know that Sadia is 
uh, <coughs> one of the, but she's like the high techie end mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Um, and will presumably be helping Mara lead the ritual to get Sabathun out of the crystal. Right. Um, I do wonder if we're going to see, because I, I, I haven't read, I haven't read three and four. I've read number five. I haven't read three and four. Uh, I look forward to seeing, like, do some of these characters not make it out of here? And is that why, do Petra, Mara, and Sadia kind of, maybe even Shurochi, do they fill out the rest of the circle of Techians that are in Mara's chambers right now? Yeah. I think that's probably the most intriguing thing. Like, these these are NPCs that we've encountered, that we've saved, that we've done missions with. Are we going to get a purpose for them again or not? Yeah. It would go a long way, as I think, towards making the strikes seem like legitimate story content like oh okay so that the techian that we rescued that we had to keep alive when she was taken is still around she's still doing things right yeah same with shiro chi yeah so uh yeah just real quick lore corner just kind of short sweet and to the point uh we're gonna do the next two pieces next week cool yeah i i like this i like the I like this uh, section of lore. I always think that this, like the reef and the and the characters surrounding Mara, are fascinating. Because like, as much as we've been with them, right, and Crow, really, like Aldrin, I guess, then Crow, like we don't. There's not a lot of Awoken characters that we like have deep lore with, right? So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think exploring the Tekkens and... That are outside of the tower. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's what I meant, you know. So, yeah. Uh, super interesting. Good choice, Josh. Good choice. Look at you. Thanks, man. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, 